We all know the saying, when in Rome, do what the Romans do. But what if you don't know what the Romans do? Well, that's where I've come in. I've made all the mistakes so you don't have to. And in this video, we're gonna talk about things you should never do when traveling in Italy. What's up, traveler? Steven here from Ginger On A Go, a YouTube channel dedicated to helping you travel smarter. And in this video, I am gonna save you from some embarrassing mistakes in Italy. Trust me, I've been there, I've done that, and I have the embarrassing stories to prove it. From dining disasters to transport troubles, I've got you covered. And by the end of this video, you will be navigating Italy like a pro, avoiding tourist traps, and blending in with the locals. So get ready to learn from my mistakes, and let's dive in. All right, first, let's talk about something that might seem harmless, but can actually land you in a little bit of hot water in Italy. Imagine this, you spent all this time planning your trip. You navigated the hustle and bustle of airports, spent a day flying to Rome, spent hours wandering around the maze that is the Vatican City, only to arrive at the most iconic ceiling in the world, the Sistine Chapel. But right beside you is a tourist munching on a cannoli. It kind of ruins the whole thing, right? Which brings us to our first point, which is in Italy, do not ever eat or drink at major historical sites. And I know that's hard when Italy has such amazing food. Trust me, put on a few pounds. Eating and drinking at major historical sites in Italy is a big no. In fact, most cities like Rome and Venice have laws to discourage people from even attempting to do it. Why? Well, because they want to preserve these sites and that is an easy way to do it. So what happens if you're caught sipping an espresso at the Sistine Chapel or eating a piece of pizza at the Colosseum? Well, you could get a hefty fine or worse. Some serious disapproving looks from the local. And as a tourist, nobody wants that. Personally, when I'm hungry and exploring historical sites, I will often avoid the touristy places. Instead, I will wander down nearby alleys and side streets looking for hidden hole in the wall places, and this has the added bonus of not only are you eating more authentic Italian cuisine, but you're likely to stumble on some hidden sites or gyms that most people never see. So it's win-win. As much as Italy is about food, and a lot of Italy is about food, it is also about respecting the culture that you're in. So don't snack at major historical sites. It just ruins it for other people and it's breaking the law in a lot of cases. Continuing with the theme of food. Okay, so we've talked about where not to eat, but let's talk about how to eat in Italy. But wait, before we dive into that steaming plate of pasta, let's talk about how you can avoid some dining disasters when eating in Italy, because food etiquette is different than in most places in the world. So let's lay down the food rules and talk about what you should not do when eating in Italy. First up, pasta etiquette, because it is different in Italy. And you might think you know how to do it, but chances are you don't. And believe it or not, there is a right and wrong way to eat pasta in Italy. The wrong way is to cut it with a fork. You never wanna cut your pasta. The right way to eat pasta in Italy is to spin it on your fork, twirl it up, and then eat it. If you're having trouble spinning it on your fork, you can put your fork against the spoon and do it. But that creates a noise that literally gives me the worst headache in the world. If you're with me, you're not going to do it. And why would you want to not cut your pasta in Italy? Why is it against Italian etiquette? Well, mainly just because cutting pasta is seen as something done for little kids. And you're not a little kid, you're a traveler. You got to Italy all by yourself, so you don't need to cut your pasta. And there's more things to talk about when it comes to pasta etiquette in Italy. Like for one, you never ever want to put cheese on seafood pasta. It is seen as a major faux pas in the country as well as ask for other things to doctor up your pasta, like ketchup. That's pretty much insulting the chef's ancient grandmother's recipe. You don't wanna do that. It's seen as very insensitive and rude. If you wanted to eat it as the chef prepared it without cutting it. If the chef wanted it cut, he would've cut it, but he didn't. Also, it's important to try to finish every bite of pasta in Italy. I know Italy is a foodie's paradise and you're always full, but if you order pasta, try to finish it all. It's just seen as kind of rude not to eat all your pasta and you'll probably end up hurting the chef's feelings or the restaurant will think you didn't like it, but it's always good to finish all your food anyway. Next up, something that might surprise you, and I know it shocks a lot of people the first time in Italy or to the Mediterranean for that matter, is that when you sit down at a restaurant 
and the waiter brings you a basket of bread and a bottle of water, those things are not free. The bread and water you have to pay for. The bread is used more as a pre-meal snack or you can use it to soak up any leftover sauce throughout the meal. But you do have to pay for them. This is not Olive Garden, it's Italy. So do not be surprised when you see it on the bill. Now, prices vary restaurant to restaurant, but I would say a good average price is between two or three euros. Some restaurants charge less, but they charge it per person. So it really just depends on where you're at. Now, if you do not want the bread and you do not want the water, it is really simple. Just don't touch them. You can hand them back to the waiter if you want, say you don't want them, but the moment you touch that bread, it is going on your bill. Personally, I eat the bread a lot because it's so good and it's not that much. It's like two euros. So, I mean, you're in Italy. Why not eat all the bread you can? And it's really good bread. And it's a once in a lifetime experience. So everybody make their own choice. I understand if you're on a budget, there's definitely times where I didn't eat the bread because I was on a budget. But if you can afford it, why not? Live it up. All right, our last little restaurant tip for Italy and something that a lot of people get wrong, especially Americans, is over tipping. In Italy, servers are paid a livable wage, so they're not relying on tips to make a living. And in some cases, tipping too much can actually be seen as offensive, like they need the money. So in Italy, all that's really expected is that you round up the bill slightly, if at all, you don't really need to, but if your service was really good, you can if you want. All right, our next thing not to do when traveling in Italy, and one that literally breaks my heart, is that you do not order a cappuccino after 11 or 12 p.m. It breaks my heart because I have all these weird coffee customs. Like at home, I just drink coffee black. If I'm meeting friends at a cafe, I drink coffee with cream. And when I'm traveling, I always, always, always drink cappuccinos. But in Italy, you can't. In Italy, ordering a cappuccino after 11 or 12 p.m. is like wearing socks with sandals. It's just not done. And that's because cappuccinos are seen as a morning drink. And Italians believe that the frothy milk is too heavy for later in the day. And so no one orders a cappuccino after 11. You're pushing it with 12, but you could probably squeeze it in. And I found this out the hard way. One of my first days in Italy, I strolled into a cafe in late afternoon, ordered a cappuccino. The guy behind the counter gave me a weird look, but I was like, hey, maybe he's just having a bad day. Maybe he just thinks I'm weird. And I grabbed my cappuccino, I went back to the table and I was drinking it. And a local came up to me and was like, we don't do that. And I was like, why? And he was like, this is why. And I was like, oh, I didn't know. So breaks my heart because I'm weird and I like my little coffee rituals. But, you know, when in Italy, you gotta do as the Romans do. And those Romans ain't drinking cappuccino afternoon. And one thing you should always do when you're planning on traveling in Italy, and that is like this video, just like it. It's just a button down there. Just click that button for me. Thank you. All right, now that we have our coffee sorted out, let's talk about one of the most important things not to do when traveling in Italy, because a lot of people make this mistake and it could end up costing you a lot. And that is, do not forget to validate your train ticket before getting on the train in Italy. You see, when you buy a train ticket in Italy, it does not mean you can just get on the train and go. First, you have to validate it. And if you don't, chances are you will get stuck with a hefty fine, Personally, I've done this a couple times. The first time the conductor was nice. They let me get out at the next stop, run, validate my train ticket real quick, run back on the train. It was actually an ordeal because the platform we stopped at, the train ticket validation machine wasn't working. So I had to run down the stairs, run across to the next one, run up, validate it, and get back to the train before it left, which was crazy because I left everything I own on the train. So if that train left, I would have been screwed. The second time the conductor was not so nice and I got stuck with, I think it was an 80 euro fine, which was twice the price of the train ticket. But validating your train ticket is kind of confusing if you've never done it before. So before you get on the train, at that platform, you'll see boxes everywhere. You just stick the ticket in and it will validate them. Digital tickets like your rail passes, you do not need to validate them. And I break down everything you need to know about using your rail pass in the video above. So check it out. All right, we're making good progress on things not to do in Italy. Let's talk about another one that might seem a little weird, 
and kind of off-putting, but I promise you it's not. And that is smiling at strangers. Walking down the street in Italy and smiling at everybody that passes you by is not as common as it is in some other places around the world. It's definitely not the social norm. And that might sound rude, but it's really not. It's because Italians value real genuine connections. They're not big fans of fake friendliness or fake shows of affection. So don't smile at everyone you meet. Of course, if you start a conversation with someone, if you're getting to talk for a few minutes, then it's okay to smile. But just a random stranger walking down the street isn't part of the local culture because it's seen as fake friendliness and that is not what Italians are about. Instead, reserve it for people you're talking to, our friends you've made, our family. Well, you can always smile at your family, I guess, if you want to. I mean, you probably don't but who knows? Okay, let's move on to something that might seem harmless, but can rub Italians the wrong way, and that is imitating Italian accents. You might think it's all in good fun, but it can be seen as rude and off-putting. Instead of trying to sound Italian, just learn a few Italian phrases that will show respect for the culture and the people, but don't try to say them in a fake Italian accent. Instead, say them in your own accent, this goes for hand gestures as well. I know in Italy it's really easy to talk with the hands because everybody's talking with their hands. But this can be seen as disrespectful and rude, like you're mocking them. But instead of doing those things, just focus on learning a few Italian phrases and then say them in your own accent. This shows that you respect the culture and at least you're giving it a try without coming off like you're mocking it or making fun of it. And just as a little added bonus, here are a few Italian phrases that you should learn Grazie, which is thank you. Prego, which is you're welcome. You can use this as somebody handed you something, you can say prego, but you can also hear it when you walk into a restaurant or a cafe. The waiter will often say prego as in you're welcome here, you know, so it can be used either way. There's also ciao, which can be used as hello or goodbye. Bella, which is beautiful. All those little key phrases are handy when traveling in Italy and You'll get more smiles from the locals just by trying and making an effort. We're not trying to land a movie role. We're not trying to be over the top. We just want to show our respect for the culture without mocking it. So Italians really do not like it when you use a fake Italian accent. And finally, our last thing is do not rush your meal. In Italy, after you're finished eating, unlike the US where when we're finished eating, we want our check right away, that is not done in Italy or anywhere in the Mediterranean, really. When you finish eating, Italians expect you to just sit there a while and digest your food. You can pass the time by having a coffee or a dessert shot. You will not get the check right away. And asking for the check right away can be seen as rude. Now, if you are in a hurry, say you have a tour lined up or you gotta catch a train or a bus, you can't ask for the check. It's not the rudest thing you can do in Italy. It's just not normal unless you have to go in a hurry. You don't have to go in a hurry. Take in the atmosphere and the ambiance of where you're at. You're in Italy. Sit back, relax, enjoy it, digest your food, and then get on to the next site. All right, guys, and that is it for our list of things not to do in Italy. I hope this helped you. If it did, like this video, subscribe. This channel has been silent for a while, but we are making a comeback. We are getting back into the flow of it, so expect new content every week. And until next time, travel with confidence. I haven't said that in a while. Wow. And we're back.